What? It's time now for My Two Favorite Librarians. Brought to you by the Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. Hi, this is My Two Favorite Librarians. I'm Denise Corey. I'm Chantel Taylor. And today we're talking about books on creativity. We are recording this at my house. Yes. And Again. There, and there are cats. So you may hear various chirps or meows. Just I wish aware. your cats were as well trained as Elvis from My Favorite Murder so that I could just put the microphone up and they would like meow on cue. But Elvis, isn't Elvis a Siamese? Yes. Yeah. Siamese are much more meowy. She also had him treat trained. Not that if I ran into the kitchen, your cats wouldn't come running. I mean, if I just walked into the kitchen, your cats assume I'm getting them some sort of food. Yeah. If you walked into the kitchen, my cats would follow you quite quickly. They're both a little chunky. That's okay, though. You're pretty. Yes, I'm about to get bit. So, creativity, eh? <laughs> I broke this down into two ways. Okay. So first of all, there are books on creativity. Yes, I have a list. How to be more creative, how to unblock yourself, how to like start something new, blah, blah, blah. So yes, there's a huge list of books. I have a list sitting right in front of me. I put this list together a couple years ago. So it's, you know, not all the newest stuff for... Dn Fitzpatrick, when she was starting her big online course, the multi-week course. Yes. So I sent her a list of books on creativity. I don't know if she used it or not, but I assume that she's already read most of these books because she's like super creative. The biggest one, the best known, is The Artist's Way. Yes, which I have read. Have you? I have, yes. I have not. I know. It's shocking. I know. So that's by Julia Cameron. And she's written other books on creativity. This is like her area of interest. Yeah, there's at least. Well, there's Letters to a Young Artist, Building a Life in Art, The Sound of Paper, The Vein of Gold, A Journey to Your Creative Heart. And Walking in This World, The Practical Art of Creativity. And those are just the ones that we own. There are probably more. This is like her big thing. And then she has like, there are journals based on it and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's like she's got a good little cottage industry going for herself. Trying to open up people's creativity for them. One book on creativity that I really enjoyed was Big Magic. Elizabeth Gilbert. Elizabeth Gilbert. So you may know that name. She wrote Eat, Love, Pray. Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, whatever. I only read Eat. (laughs) I haven't read that book. Eat took place in Italy? Italy, yeah. And it was the best part of the book. Once we got into India and praying, I was like, yeah, we're done here. (laughs) Where does love take place? I believe, ooh, love is in... Indonesia? I feel like they were all eyes. Oh, let me Google. Perfect timing. Excellent. I was correct. Italy, India, and Indonesia. Okay. Yes. Do you think she did that on purpose? I do, because I did read, like I said, I did read to India. And I feel like she was like in a fairly dark place. She had a divorce and she was... Like, and I don't remember it really, like, graphically, but, like, she consulted a psychic at one point, so I think she was kind of really going with her gut, so I feel like, yeah, she may have, like, sort of went, let's do all eyes, (laughs) yeah. So, Big Magic, I read, and I really did like her talking about her creative process, and then her also just really trying to advise people on you know, being creative and you don't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be this big thing where this is what you're making your money from or whatever. It's just like everybody needs a creative outlet. I did hear a lot of people, I read a couple of reviews saying that they didn't like Eat, Pray, Love, but they really liked Big Magic. Yeah. So I didn't even try and read Eat, Pray, Love. I mean, it's not. Read the eating part because it's wonderful. You know, I have been to Italy. I did eat there. So you can because there's a lot of food talk. I had a lot of pasta. She has to buy bigger pants. (laughs) 
like during her stay there. But I also, and I know we've talked about Italy before, I climbed so many stairs, more stairs even than we climbed when we went to Paris. So I feel like it kind of evened out. You don't believe that. I do believe it. You didn't have to buy new pants when you were in Italy. I did not. I bought a beautiful cape, which I've never had the opportunity to wear. Sadness. Okay, other creative books. Pencil Dancing, New Ways to Free Your Creative Spirit. It approaches creativity from the point of view of a dance between your conscious and unconscious mind and ways to unlock your creativity because you know they say that artisticness no one half of your brain is more you know focused on art and creativity and that sort of thing and then the other part of your brain is more focused on math and logic I don't know if that's true but it's a theory they don't know what's going on in the brain yeah I mean as long as I have one and you know what I might do I might just post this list to our Facebook page. I came across quite a few lists when I was looking at this. I found one, it was like 100 creative books. And it was like curated by like Mark Zuckerberg and Arianna Huffington. And I was like, oh, but I mean, most of the books were very similar. The War of Art. Okay. Was one that showed up a lot. I don't know if we own that book by Stephen Pressfield, which of course, when I looked at it, I thought, why is the art of war on this list? But no, it's a play on that title. Yes, I assumed. John Cleese just came out with a book entitled Creativity. Yes, that's true. I saw that. It's sitting on Adam's desk, waiting for him to put it into the catalog. So I know we have it. And a lot of artists, Twyla Tharp has a very famous book on creativity. Questlove has a book on creativity. I feel like a lot, well, Deanne, I mean, okay, so let's go into the second type of books on creativity. Okay. Because I read The Artist's Way when I was younger. One of the people I used to work at with in Halifax, she's like an artist and she was like, oh, this book. And she was really encouraging me to be like a more creative person, which is not something that I really would have had growing up. Like, But you are creative. You're just creative. The way that you show your creativity is with fiber arts. Yes, in a way. Now, would I like to be like, would I love to be a journaler that can like do fancy writing and like make beautiful? Yes, I would. Would I like to be someone since you watch videos on fountain pens? I do. I do watch videos on fountain pens. There's so many ways that I want to be creative. I am a very visual person. So I don't necessarily want to read and do exercises. I want to look at things that then inspire me to go and do something. So I would consider a cookbook, a book on creativity. I did when I was looking at books to spark your creativity. I had listed as examples like different creative outlets. Yes. And I listed creative lettering. Yes. Yes. So, uh, I love I lettering. Baking. Yes. And cooking, I guess, would and fall into that. I want books with pictures in them. So like maybe it's not the most practical book that I'm going to make every recipe out of, but I want something that I look at and I think, oh, I really want to try to like make bread or I really want to try, like I want something that really stimulates my eyes. It's and, one of the reasons I love Instagram so much. And you had started to talk about... Deanne's books, Deanne Fitzpatrick's yes, books. Because she like she's written several books and I'd say a lot like all of her books would be about creativity. And they're just there are beautiful pictures of her artwork that she's made. And her artwork, it's really interesting, especially when you go back and look at the older books and then look at the newer ones, like the progression and the change in her subject matter and and what she's doing and her style like I love I think most people see Deanne in a certain way and then a couple of years ago she started go, sort of veering off like when she did that impressionist class the, the rug that you finished and I pa- didn't the painterly yes and she's got a lot more sort of floral elements 
And her style is kind of changing again, I noticed over the winter. She's using some colors that she doesn't normally use. And it's like, ooh. And so her creativity, like, and you've seen it in her, if you watch her videos, she'll often like pull out a book on flowers and start looking through and, and looking at pictures of flowers or like different painting books on how people create flowers. So those can be creativity books as well. Yeah. The other things I had listed, I mean, if you are looking to have a more more outlets for creativity, we have books on how to paint and on how to draw and how to knit and how to cross stitch and how to... So there's all kinds of how, how to, to do woodcraft, how to do metal craft, how to make jewelry. How to whittle. Yeah, how to whittle. How to do embroidery, how to make your own clothes. How to mend your clothes, because even that, there's a very fancy Japanese term for... Oh, yeah, with the mending where they have all those beautiful designs. And I can't think of what it's called. No, but we do have a book. um, book. I know our Instagram name is Boku, but I can't think of what her actual name is (laughs) because I only know people through Instagram. Yeah, so, and, and I really think that creativity could be anything you think it can be. So if there's... If you want to write, if you want to draw, if you want to maybe color. Yeah, a lot. Actually, there were quite a few coloring books on the like 100 best creativity list that I found. Well, and some people, you know, find that soothing. really soothing. Yeah. I tried to take up coloring and I found it irritating. I would rather knit. Yeah. I've just gotten my knitting mojo back after really having none for like the past four months and just kind of mindlessly knitting socks and not really being able to take on a big project. And I have finished a shawl and started another in the last couple of weeks. And I had taken out Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac. Okay. And so May is the time to start knitting your mittens. And I was like, ooh, May is the time for me to start knitting my mittens. Why is May the time to start? Because then they're them? done by like October. Oh, so if you start them when they're cold, when it's cold. Also, it's a small project. You could have that in your lap. So I've kind of like looked at all my half finished pandemic mittens that are still sitting on needles or that need a pair. And I'm like, oh, is this a good time to ask about the mittens I no. was supposed to get for my birthday two years ago? No. Okay. Those may still be. Those are in timeout. I still haven't pulled the out the because I I ruined the thumb and now I've got to pull the whole body of the mitten back and I'm still trying to figure out a way that I can hack the thumb into the. I just don't know. She was. You're stifling my creativity. (laughs) She was gonna make me Hufflepuff mittens because I am a Hufflepuff, but that's okay. That's okay. I'll I'll live without them. I have been scrolling Instagram. I may have bought a Norwegian mitten book that's in Norwegian that I'm going to have to translate because like her Instagram is so amazing and I just love. <laughs> so are you just going to Google translate? Yeah. The- <laughs> so that you can make Norwegian mittens? I was hoping that there'd be like an electronic version. I've been sort of waiting and waiting and waiting. And I took a Selbu mitten class in the fall last year or maybe last spring, and the person that I took the course all with. All time blends. Yeah, just last March, <laughs> which was and, all of last year. <laughs> yeah, March has only lasted for 15 months. And she had mentioned, oh, there's like this electronic pamphlet, and it's all these great mittens, and she used all these really great colors. And I was like, ooh, I need to, because every time I make a mitten, I'm like, eh, I'm just going to do black and white. Oh, I'm just going to make black and white. I'm just going to make black and white. And she has like all these reds and pinks and greens. And I was like, I just visually need to see someone use a color. And then I'm like, oh, I like that. I want to make that mint in those colors. Here's a different thing that people don't often think of. Painting your nails. Oh, yeah. Because there are all kinds of crazy nail art out yes. there. Or doing your hair. We have several books on just hair braiding and Some of those are insane. And I find painting my nails uh, a very soothing thing. Like I would almost put that in more of a like meditation or self-care. I'll put on a book. I like take what, you know, like once a week and I, you know, push my cuticles back and I like hydrate and 
like make everything. Meanwhile, I slap that stuff on. We're going to stop that today when we're done. And then scrape around the edges. No, you're not flooding your cuticles today. (laughs) We're fixing that today. So what are you reading right now? Okay. So on August 24th, Sarah McLean has a new book coming out called Bombshells. Mm -hmm. Historical. Yes. Historical romance. And someone has started a read-along where over the next 13 weeks, we are reading all 13 of Sarah McLean's books. And I was like, yes, yes, I am doing that. Again, speaking of creativity, I'll see if I can post a picture from Instagram. This girl did a beautiful like journal page where she's got all the books listed and she's going to sort of decorate as she goes along through the 13 books. Oh, those bullet journals? Yes. I love those bullet journals. I wish, although I would spend more money, I would really have to have like a third job to afford (laughs) yarn and journaling. Yes, and fancy pens. So I'm starting at the beginning with nine rules to break when romancing a rake, which is one of my favorites. And I've only read one book in the series, so they're going in order. So I'm going to read all three of them. And I checked today and all of the Sarah McLean audiobooks look to be available on Hoopla. Oh, that's fantastic. Because so, then you don't have to yeah, wait. Yeah, use my Audible credits. Yeah. Because if it's on Overdrive, you have to wait for your hold. Yes. But on Hoopla, it's instantly available. So I've taken out the first three. And it's like nine rules to break when romancing a rake. 10 rules to something when landing a lord (laughs) and 12 rules and something a duke. I can't remember. But what happened to 11? Oh, did I miss 11? Yeah. 9, 10. Oh, sorry. 11 is the duke then. Okay. (laughs) So Sarah McLean is doing a whole thing on her Instagram. She's answering questions for people each week about the different books. She's giving like little behind the scenes things. Very, very, very excited. And I'm in on the ground floor. So I'm going to see if I can get all 13 books done this summer. Awesome. Yes, I'm very excited. Which means that every week when I ask you what you're reading, it's It's going to be be Sarah McLean. Immortals After Dark or Sarah McLean. Because I've also, I kind of was like, "Eh, maybe I don't want to read these all again. But no, I'm back in again. I'm back in. Oh, good. Immortals After Dark. I love them. Yeah. Do you know what we're talking about next week? Are we talking about the episode we missed? Yeah, I'm not sure. So either it's either recommended by a librarian, which I don't think we did that recording, or it's a mystery. Oh, do you know what? One of your neighbors stopped me while I was out playing Pokemon the other day and said... Do you guys ever do mysteries? I'd like to. It's Luna's dad. Oh, okay. Yes. That's the only way Denise knows anyone I, I by own, their dog's name. I know all my neighbors by their dog's names. <laughs> and I had said, oh, I'll mention it to Denise and we'll see if we can fit it in. And he gave me some recommendations. Oh, excellent. Of mysteries he's really liked. So okay. I will recommend those. Good. Well, we'll talk about mysteries then. We can always go back and everything we do is recommended by a librarian let's face it i know it's true or not recommended by me well yeah because you well i mean you recommend lots of romance and we did have that person from port elgin go into the port elgin library and ask what book you were talking about and then the port elgin library (laughs) poor people had to figure (laughs) and we found the book so that was recommended by you. That's right. Yeah. They loved your recommendation. Yeah. Excellent. So next week, let's do mysteries. Okay, mysteries. It's a mystery. Excellent. Talk to you next week. Bye. My two favorite librarians. Brought to you by the Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst.